The Toyota Crown is finally back in the US after a brief hiatus, and it's back not as the stately sedan that we once recognized, but as something more of a crossover <laughs> that's hardly recognizable as a Toyota Crown, but is just so quirky and weird that it eventually grows on you. Toyota is still claiming that this is a full-size sedan, but the company admits that it's trying to reimagine what that means. That puts the new Toyota Crown somewhere between a full-size crossover and a full-size sedan. The car is trying to be a lot of things to a lot of different people, and that's usually a recipe for disaster. But it kind of works here given the new trims. The Toyota Crown XLE, the Toyota Crown Limited, and the Toyota Crown Platinum. Rather than go all in on luxury, Toyota was trying to add a bit of performance to the mix with this new Crown, which more or less explains the radical redesign. The car's appearance now reflects Toyota's intention, which was to turn the Crown from a stately sedan into a performance hybrid that's not that far behind a sports sedan. But it's pretty clear that in the new Crown, performance was the priority. And that much is obvious when you step inside the car. And even though the new Toyota Crown could still be considered a luxury car in the Toyota lineup, it falls short of the luxury even in something like the entry-level Lexus ES. And even though I'm a big fan of the new Toyota audio multimedia system, some of the materials in the new Toyota Crown cabin don't feel like they would fit into a Lexus. There's a combination of hard plastics and leather where there should be full leather permeating the cabin, but what the car loses in luxury, it gains in performance. The Crown is fast, but mostly in a specific trim. The two lower trim models, XLE and Limited, come with the latest Toyota hybrid system, which combines a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine and two electric motors. This setup makes a total of 236 horsepower and it comes with all wheel drive. It's a fine configuration, but it's meant to be efficient, not fun. It never reaches the same performance as that of the Crown Platinum, which has the hybrid max system. Now this is made up of a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine and two electric motors for a total output of 340 horsepower and 400 foot pound of torque. The Crown Platinum also has adaptive suspension and a different all wheel drive system than the other lower crowns, which adjusts torque on the fly and favors the rear wheels when sending power by a big margin. So the car ends up feeling like a fast sports sedan with up to 80% of the power being sent to the rear. The torque shove from the Crown Platinum's hybrid power comes on early at around 2000 RPM and it'll go zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. And trust me, that feels fast for a car that's as big and heavy as the Crown. So while the Crown can't easily be compared to an entry-level Lexus in terms of comfort and luxury, it outdoes the base model Lexus in terms of performance. The thing is, this is going to be one of the first comparisons that most people are going to make with the all-new Crown. It's either gonna be about comparing the outgoing Toyota Avalon, or it's gonna be a comparison to the Lexus ES. The Crown is very much its own thing, and that's clear from the car's appearance, which is unlike most things on the market today. The risk that Toyota is taking with the Crown makes the hybrid appealing to me because I love when car makers embrace weirdness and just go wide with it. If you wanna know more about the 2023 Toyota Crown or anything else car-related, please visit jalopnik.com.